Hi, my name is Sarah Sass with Sassy Quilting and I'm going to teach you how to do a Laura Heine collage. And for today's example, we're going to use the featherweight pattern. With me today, I have my trusty helper. This is Sandy. Sandy, say hi. Okay, you're going to poop. That's fine. That works too. He gets a little camera shy, but don't worry. He'll talk when he feels like it. So I did make one of these quilts already the other day. And I wanted to show you what it looked like so you can have an idea what it's going to look like when it's done. Um, yours will be a little bit different. You can mix and match the flowers however you want. And also I wanted to give you confidence that this video is going to lead to something successful. Anyways, back to the quilt. So first I'm going to show you the supply list you're going to need in order to complete this quilt. And we'll go through it one piece at a time. You're going to need the pattern a rotary cutter, some scotch tape, some scissors, an applique pressing sheet. This one is called Big Goddess Sheet. Your foundation ease and your steam a seam too. Okay, with my pattern, I also bought the, the kit with the fabric. It comes with all the fabrics you'll need to recreate this picture. So they're all different sizes and different color schemes. You have your florals, your darks, everything you see here. And then the next step, I'm gonna show you the easy part. The first step we're gonna do is iron our fabrics to the steam seam. You can see there's two sides. There's one side with all these little yellow uh, dots and everything, the other side is nothing. It doesn't matter what side you start with, just pick a side. So you're going to open it up. And I just let it roll right off the edge of my iron. Then I have all my fabrics that I have from my kit. All I'm going to do is tape them with the right sides up. They don't have to be touching. There can be gaps. You can see right here, I have gaps where the fabric's not touching. Don't worry about that. So that's a good start. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my applique pressing sheet and I'm gonna lay that over this and I'm gonna make sure it's covering all the spots that have blue areas showing because what happens if I don't have this on top and see how there's glue showing right here if I don't have this covering my in between the iron and um, the glue that glue is gonna stick to my iron and it's gonna ruin my iron so this is a protective sheet and it'll catch all the glue and then I can just rub the stickiness off later. So I have that on there. Got my iron on as hot as it will go. I do not have the steam on despite the steam a seam. And I'm just gonna iron it on. And it does take a lot of ironing, but I'm gonna hold it down for like three to five seconds, it's yelling at me that I'm holding it down too long. So lift it back up, hold it down, go back again. And I'm gonna do this until I've ironed down everything. Can't take it, it's too cute, it's, it's disgusting. So I finished ironing all my fabric onto my seam to seam. I still have some left over, which is great because I can use it for another project later. But now what I'm gonna do, as soon as I find my rotary cutter, I'm gonna cut out all of this and I'm gonna do it very, very, not so carefully, just kidding. All I'm gonna do is this because I'm not following any lines. I'm not using a ruler. If you look down at what I'm doing, I'm just cutting right along. It doesn't have to be perfect. 
because I'm going to break them up into sections. Like here I have all these dark colors, so I'll end up organizing all the dark colors together. So simple. That's all I do. I'm going to go through, I'm going to cut all my fabrics into little squares, just like this. Little pieces I can play with. Okay, and I'm going to keep doing that till I cut out all my fabrics. And then I'll meet you back here in a few minutes. Bye! Okay, so I have all my pieces of fabric cut out and you'll notice when you cut out your fabric, you have dark colored fabrics which are going to be for the sewing machine. You're going to have floral fabrics which are going to be your quilt that the machine is quilting. Your gray colored fabrics are going to be background and your yellow fabrics are, are going to be your table and then you'll have some little extra stuff here. What I did is I organized, and I'll show you over here how I did that. I took all the fabrics I cut and I organized them. I have my blacks for my sewing machine. I have my florals for my quilt. I have the yellows and I have the grays for the background. And that's gonna help me to organize when I go to piece my collage together. Now, one example I want to show you, and then my partner, you can bring the camera close here. Sometimes um, when you go to piece these uh, papers together, you're going to, what you're going to do is tear the fabric away from the paper, and there should be sticky side here, and you can actually see the glue is stuck to the fabric. Now, if I was to take this off, and the sticky side wasn't stuck to here and it was still stuck to the paper, then that means I didn't um, iron it long enough. I should have kept the iron on longer, left, let it get hotter to melt the glue. So if that's the case and you have a piece that you wanna use and it's not sticky, just take it back to the ironing board and re-iron it and you'll be good to go. So inside of my pattern came this, um, piece of paper. I don't know what the official name is, but I find that if I don't tape it down, I mess it up. So I'm taping down all four corners to hold it in place. I already put tape on that side. And then we have our pattern ease, which we already cut to the specified measurements and I cut mine just a little bit bigger but that's okay because I give myself some extra room and I'm also gonna take that down because I know myself when I start tracing it's gonna move and I'm gonna get frustrated so it's easier just to think okay so now I have everything taped down and I'm just gonna start tracing also, just for a point of reference, when I did my last one and I did trace out these flowers and it ended up not being necessary because um, you ended up just putting the flowers everywhere. So you don't need to trace out these flowers in the middle or this thing circle here, but everything else definitely needs to be traced out. This is going to be the... Um, the not the hardest part, but this is where um, you guys are going to have to pay attention. And then once I show you this, it's easy peasy. So what I want to do is usually you're going to start with the background. I'm going to do all of the light colored pieces first. And from there, um, I'll do the table. Then I'll do the machine. And last, I'll do the quilt. But right now I'm going to do the background. So I want to put this picture here which will be in this area. Well, I can't cut it out because then I'm going to be 
Uh, I don't know where to cut it. So what you do, this is the hardest part, which is not hard. I peel my fabric away from the paper, but not all the way because I'm gonna have to put it back. So you see I'm peeling it just enough to where I can still see my background. And I'm gonna draw right along this line. And don't worry too much about the lines being perfect because one, it's a collage. So it's nothing is perfect about a collage. It's supposed to be kind of everywhere. You're, things are gonna go on top of each other. Flowers are gonna cover a lot of this. And that part, I might have to add some more fabric because it's not going to quite fit, but that's okay. I'll just cut to here. I'm going to put a line there because I'm going to cut that part off. Then I put this back. Press it down real good. Flip it over. You can see I have my line and that's what I'm going to cut out. And then when I cut it out, I'll be able to stick it on there perfectly. And that's how I'm going to be able to do the whole quilt, just like that. If you have any questions, you can reach me at sassyquilting at gmail.com. I'll be happy to help you out with whatever you need. And if you like this tutorial video and you want me to teach you something else, go ahead and um, message me. I'm also on Instagram at Sassy Quilting. Isn't this so fun to watch? <laughs> okay, throw this in my trash can. Actually, I'm not gonna throw it away because I'm probably gonna use some more of it. So this is where I get to finally peel off that back end. And then I fit this up perfectly. And I, ta-da! And the good thing about it is it's not stuck permanently. I can peel it right back on. It stays on pretty good. And then once I iron it, it will be on there forever and ever. But I'm just gonna leave it there because I might, I might change my mind, I might move it, I might put something somewhere else. Or maybe I'm gonna put a piece here and I need to lift it. So I'm not gonna iron it till the very end. And plus I need to fill in this spot, but I might use a different fabric. Maybe I'll fill in this spot with that fabric. And in that case, this is what I would do. I'll give you another example. There's no right or wrong way to do it. It's a collage, so you can make it look however you want. And then here, I'm gonna draw just a little bit over the top of the other fabric so I don't have an open seam. I don't wanna pile fabric on top of fabric because when I go to sew it on the long arm machine, it's gonna be really thick. If you have five pieces of fabric on top of each other it's gonna get really thick and whoever sews it like myself because I am a long arm quilter it gets really hard it gets really thick once you start piling on the fabric so that's why you kind of want to lay them out next to each other and not necessarily keep putting them on top of each other so I've got that one done Ooh, the back out real good like that. Cut it back out. This is so simple, you guys. This project is so cute and fun and my mom is gonna love it when I'm done and I give it to her. So, there you have it. I kinda want them to touch a little bit more. And there we go. And it's not exactly on the line, but that's okay because when I do the machine, I'll cover it up. I'm gonna continue to do all of the background in light colors. I'm just gonna mix match like this and like that and like that. It doesn't, it's gonna look beautiful no matter what I do. 
because it's a collage quilt. I'll see you in just a few. As you can see, if you look down here, I've completed a lot of the background and it's just basic squares and I started to do the table. The next step I'm going to be doing is I'm going to do the sewing machine and with the blacks and then I'm going to use this block as my quilt. And then I'm going to take the other pieces with the flowers. I'm going to cut out the flowers and then I'm going to use that to fill it in around here to make it blend and mesh together. Um, the one thing I wanted to show you before I end this video, because I think by now everybody should have the hang of it, is that when it comes time to do the sewing machine, you're going to want to add little details and it's going to be covered in all black and you might not be able to see all these little pieces here and here, which is fine. You can cover it in black because you can always revert back to this and use this as your sketch and you can take your piece, for example, let's say you covered the machine in black already and you don't remember where you wanted a certain piece. So you can take this and say, oh yeah, it was right here, cut it out. And then you can place it over the piece of black fabric that's already there. The trick is just to not overlap too many pieces of fabric. Once you have everything on here, you have all your final touches, um, you have all your details, take it to your ironing board and iron it. And excuse my language, but iron the crap out of it because you want that glue to melt and you don't want your fabric to come up later on. So put the iron on, keep it on three to five seconds. Once it's on there, it's on there for good. And that's the most important part. Other than that, you'll be done with it. Here you're looking at my finished quilt. As you can see, I did the background in pretty much, this was all one big piece of fabric. And then I added little details afterwards. Here, here's a little detail, here's a little detail. I added this square. If you come over here, I added this. I added some flowers into the corner. Um, down here is my big piece of fabric and then I cut out flowers and then I just use those to blend everything in together on the sides. And then your kit also will come with these little scissors and some safety pins and you can do whatever you want with it. Make it fun, make it yours. I added the singer thing because my mother-in-law, she loves singer sewing machines so I wanted to make that a special touch. There's really no wrong way to do it. And if you have any questions, again, at Sassy Quilting um, on Instagram or sassyquilting at gmail.com. And if you look closely one more time, you can see that I did quilt this myself. I have a long arm machine and I, I do um, long arm for people. So if you do make this quilt, and you want it long armed, uh -huh, give me a call. I'll be happy to long arm it for you at a great price. Otherwise, you can just put it on your um, regular sewing machine and go, I just went straight lines right across. So I hope this video helps and it um, brings some clarity to you for your Laura Heine project. All the projects are basically made the same and uh, thank you so much for watching my video.